Black Cat Crafts, the channel that helps you personalize your Halloween village. Our episode is Toxic Waste Cave number three, the LED waste pipe that you see in the back. This adds another element of depth and suspense to our spooky toxic waste cave. We're going to do this with just a handful of supplies, including a string of about 100 LED fairy lights, some hot glue to actually make the toxic waste coming out of the pipe. Um, I colored it with golden green fine cut glitter, as well as a glow in the dark green epoxy powder, green acrylic paint, and of course the epoxy and 90 degree iron elbow pipe and matching nut. So the first step is you might imagine we need to form the toxic waste spilling out of the pipe. The fairy lights come on a rather long string and you'll want to have your lights closer together. So you'll very carefully bend but not crease the wire. This is a very important thing. The crease may actually break it. So to take up some of the wire, I'm actually going to gently wrap it around the fairy lights and continue to bend them together to get them about every two to five centimeters in most cases. So the part of the toxic waste that I'm forming right now is the part that's coming out of the waste pipe. So it's really important for this to be a very uniform line. Don't worry about the width of the piece at this point. You're going to use hot glue to build it up to really get that thick uh, look that you'll see uh, later on in the description on the project. So I'm continuing to, again, bend the lights to get them the, about the right distance. You don't have to sit there with a ruler and measure, but you really want to have it be uh, relatively straight as well. This is wire, of course. You can, you can mold it to whatever shape that you need to do. Mine ends up having um, almost an S-curve in the end. But we are really early in the project. So as you, you bend this, don't get in love with what you're making um, because you'll, you'll end up you know, bending it and moving it as you continue to expand. So that's what it looks like when it's lit up, just as an example to show you where those LEDs are. So continue with this all the way down. Um, this image, I actually already added a little bit of hot glue to some of the lights to help make them look bigger and more diffuse. But you can see it almost looks like tree roots. And that was the look I wanted. I wanted one short arm coming off with one main arm for the toxic waste. So these are white LEDs. I suppose you could buy a strand that is green, but I'm on a budget, so I went inexpensive. Uh, in this instance, uh, it works just as well to take a little bit of inexpensive acrylic paint and lightly dab it over the LEDs. Remember, as I mentioned earlier, I've already taken a little bit of hot glue and just dabbed them on the LEDs to make them more diffuse. That's a nice to have step. It makes it easier to put the paint on it. Uh, you don't need a lot of glue either. It's just, uh, again, just a little swirl of, of hot glue um, will, will make this part work really, really nicely.
So it looks great. We have green lights now. Our next step is to really build toxic waste spill. So we've got the base set. Now we're going to add glue. Now in this part of the video, you can see that some of the lights look a little bigger already, and that's because I've been adding glue. My strategy was to add swirls of glue to all the LEDs to build them up, but also because this is a really inexpensive set of fairy lights, I was worried that the hot glue coming out of my gun would melt the plastic sheathing and potentially cause a short. Again, you know, being really conservative, not understanding exactly the specifications of these lights because I really didn't get much in the package. Um, so if there are any electricians watching or electrical engineers, you can make comments below to see if I really needed to, to do that extra step or if I could have just added a ton of glue all at once. This particular method allows for greater control. This is the bottom of the toxic waste spill that will sit in the water and start to fan out, really looking like the toxic waste is, is poisoning the water. So we're, we're starting to build that almost fan shape up where my thumb is holding it. And again, I'm going back and forth as the glue dries because I was worried that the sheathing on the wires would melt and cause a short. But there you go, you see I'm really starting to to start to look like the final project where it really does look like liquid coming, liquid waste coming out of a pipe. So continue on with this process until you get the thickness that you're looking for. So here's an example that is the, the top of the pipe. Uh, now we'll move on to the epoxy portion. So I used stone coat epoxy for this particular project. And I am setting the base for the toxic waste spill. I want to make this look as 3D as possible, but also add a little bit of shimmer. So what I'm doing is I'm sprinkling very, very fine gold glitter. Next will be green glitter. And I'm putting this right on a wet, a fresh epoxy pour. So this is a, an epoxy pour that I did for the wider project. If you're wondering why those rocks are green, I actually bought some green rocks to put under the uh, the, the toxic waste spill. That's a, a bonus. You could absolutely use acrylic paint and paint them. Um, so it's up to you. I'm using a skewer, a wooden stick to add swirls to the glitter. This is where the longest arm of the toxic waste spill is going to go. So it's going to be flowing toward the beach. So this will go under the lights so that light will reflect off the glitter and bounce around and really look, make it look, well, I don't know if magical is the right word, but definitely um, 3D, it'll give it the illusion of depth. That's a green, finely cut glitter, Martha Stewart brand. And I'm sprinkling it around where I put the gold. So this is a, um, a little gentler glitter, whereas the gold is very impactful. So I just continue sprinkling it until I've got it the way I like it. It looks great. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going back with the wooden skewer and again, putting some of the glitter in the wet epoxy, leaving some on the top. This is not the final layer of epoxy, so keep that in mind. There will be additional epoxy encasing all of this glitter in the project. So now I am working with the epoxy once it's dry. This is a little bit of green acrylic paint and I am putting it near, in some cases on top of the glitter where I didn't like it, but my goal is to put it next to the glitter. Um, the glitter is on the portion where it will be seen through the water, whereas this paint is going where my spill will sit. So it'll give it, again, more green because the water itself is blue. So it'll make this look more toxic. It'll add a little bit more of a um, opaque look as well to the section because of the waste floating in the water. I find that a more realistic look for my spooky town. But this step would be totally optional if you feel that you want a clear look. I only did it where the fan of the epoxy, the toxic waste, uh, hot glue and fairy lights will sit. So I am adding a little bit of very light paint near where the rest of the toxic waste spill is in the water. It's also underneath a planned snake. So there is a toxic sea snake with glowing eyes that will be next to the toxic waste spill. Um, check out my channel for the how-to instructions on how to do that because he's really awesome. He's a dollar store snake. I gave him glowing eyes. Actually, the power source for the eyes is the LEDs on this particular project. So the next step, once you've got that ready to go, is to add the pipe. So here I have my finished toxic waste spill sitting on top of the epoxy, but not glued into it. And I'm using that as a way to mark in the backer board. This is just a plain piece of uh, foam board where I need my pipe to go. So I've made an initial X where I thought I wanted it, and then I'm gonna take a tool and make that hole a lot larger, and then thread in the iron pipe um, right where that needs to go. Now you see that there are some LEDs coming out of the toxic waste that aren't being used, they're not covered. Those are going to go through the pipe and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. This is the back of the project and I'm threading the nut on the iron pipe that's coming out of the front. It makes it really, really stable. And then the next step is to take that LED and thread it through. Now mine have a battery operated box. That box is too big to get through that hole. So we do need to do a little bit of electrical work, but it's really easy. So let me show you how. Near the electrical box, we have a, a long strand of wires and these actually separated for me rather easy. I'm using a little bit of clear tape to mark the wires because the way these are wired, it actually matters which wires you put together. So I'm using just, again, clear tape to mark 
the wires that need to go back together after I thread them through the project. So I've marked it and in between I will cut it. And I'm using just a simple set of nippers to get that done. And now I'm able to thread the toxic waste spell from the front of the project to the back where the battery box will sit. So you poke it through. You can see that I have the mark right there. Gently pulling the whole remainder set of wires through. I'm actually going to use those wires. Uh, I actually put them, ran them back down the extra, the extra LED lights um, in the, the water, so to speak, to make it glow even more. But that's up to you if you have extra wires. So here I am stripping the, the silver coating off the wires. So all the wires are coated in a silver look plastic. Um, that does need to come off if you want the power to run. So this isn't showing it really well, but they are very, very, very fine gauge copper wires. And so you'll just gently scrape the coating off until you, the copper shows. And you'll do that for both sides that you cut. Matching the sides with the tape together, I'm going to take a fine pliers and twist the copper wire together. This will make a connection. There are other ways to do this, requiring other parts. The goal of my channel is to keep the budget down as much as possible, so I didn't have access to additional parts, but what I've got is needle nose pliers and some electrical tape. And so that's what I'll use to join the copper wire together. So once you finish reattaching the wires, you will want to use black electrical tape to protect the wires and also keep the electricity where you want it to go. Well, mine ended up looking like this. I just left the tape on where the two wires uh, were marked and set in place and turned on. This is what it looks like. Our next step is to add epoxy, but not just any epoxy, epoxy with a glow-in-the-dark additive that is green. At this step, you can see in the project the, the lines on the epoxy. That's blue epoxy. I added some and then took a break to do the glow-in-the-dark epoxy, and I'm gonna go back and very, as soon as this part's done, add in more blue epoxy. The thing of it is that the epoxy is a very thick 
liquid, it's slow moving. So if you've got a particular color that you want in a certain spot, place it there and then add the more general color all around it to keep it where, keep the color where you want it to be and the more, you know, in this case, blue everywhere else. What am I doing with that stick? Well, I'm actually adding the glow in the dark epoxy to the spill. I'm doing that to add a consistent look and I'm choosing not to just pour it on the spill because it is, while it's a thick liquid, it will just simply run down like you see here. It's not going to stay put exactly where I want it. So little dabs of it here and there. I'm going to go back and do more of that later uh, will help make the whole toxic waste spill look uniform. So as you can see, I'm pouring over the top of the, the spill that's running toward the beach, also running towards the sea snake that I mentioned a little bit earlier that has those glowing eyes. And I'll continue pouring anywhere where I think I should have toxic waste floating in the bay. When you're done with the glow in the dark epoxy, add the rest of the epoxy to this level so that way it's nice and smooth and let it dry. Now come back with another layer of clear epoxy, but this time we're going to add our pigment directly to the project. So, so far I've shown you how to paint right on to the epoxy, then to add a pigmented epoxy. Now this is the third technique where we're adding the pigment right to the epoxy. The goal of this is to add a bubbly, concentrated look to the color. It looks amazing when it's done. I'm taking a skewer and I'm just kind of pushing it in gently to get, again, that really disgusting, toxic waste, slime look built right into the epoxy. And adding that pigment right to it helps us have a lot of control over where that pigment is and also allows us to work with it and gets that unique effect that you just can't get any other way. So once you've got it exactly the way you like it, let it dry and admire your work. You've created a toxic waste spill and the final result is absolutely amazing. The next step in this project is to work on the stalactites, stalagmites, and the background. So subscribe to the channel, give it a share, like it, and of course, I want to hear your comments. Thanks for watching.